Everyone's still talking about my interview with President Trump last week at Mar-a-Lago. Dominated uh, about three or four news cycles, I think. It was pretty wild. We did make news globally on all kinds of topics we talked about and all kinds of surprising issues, right? Uh, interesting questions, if I don't mind saying myself. I am so, quite frankly, proud of the way we handled the interview, President Trump and myself. A protective force. This may be my favorite moment in the interview. Um, he acknowledged that amid all this strife, I mean, they're out to kill the guy, basically. He said that there's a protective force. Do you remember this? I, it, funny, it didn't get all that much attention because there was a lot of other things to talk about here. But this is the way I put it to the president and listen to what he said. These cases were designed to destroy you. Yes. And they've helped you. And some of us actually, we see, I know my audience and me too, we see that you're protected, maybe even by the hand of God. Has that ever crossed your mind? I mean, the idea that these indictments could have been a benefit to you politically, it's almost, it was inconceivable a year ago. Now look at where you are. Well, I've watched people over the years, politicians get indicted, and the first thing they do is go to the microphone and say, I'll be leaving office now and I will fight for my name and my reputation, and I'll be going back home to my family. You know, they leave for a lot of different reasons, uh, but nobody's ever been hit like me, uh, and it has never been anything like this. Uh, but there is some kind of a protective force because you look at what I've been hit with. There is some kind of a protective force. How interesting, how authentic, how real. And I think he's right, don't you? Something's going on. Of course, lots of folks laughed at me and us for this moment. I mean, how could they bring up God at a moment like this? Well, what? You can only bring up God as a punchline? What, what, what's the problem there? Uh, fake news, our culture, they want to rid God from every corner of our country. And when somebody should ask about him in an earnest way, that is, according to them, very, very mockable. The whole interview had a real uh, sort of uh, Dear Leader State Run TV vibes. Here's an actual question that Greg Kelly asked Trump about his many criminal investigations. These cases were designed to destroy you. Yes. And they've helped you. And some of us actually, we see, I know my audience and me too, we see that you're protected, maybe even by the hand of God. Has that ever crossed your mind? Quick follow up. Is it true that you are the chosen one? The. <laughs> The Quitsock Hadarak, who can bring balance to the force, defeat Voldemort, free us from the Matrix, and then feed a hungry world. Wow. You hear the audience groaning there because you're not supposed to talk about God anymore, right? Look, I understand. He's a controversial guy. People are going to say things. I just want to tell you that I'm proud that we discussed that. I think he can win. I think he must win. Donald Trump versus Joe Biden, hmm? I mean, what does Biden bring to the table? What? Let's take a look at Joe Biden's world, hmm? For America, losing in Afghanistan, our friends in Israel attacked and mutilated, and now <laughs> talking about, what, a ceasefire? Ukraine would not have happened if President Trump were in office, people understand that. How about Joe Biden's America? No borders and a transgender whatever the hell is going on, <laughs> Donald Trump must win. Anything can happen in politics, I know that, but it's almost good versus evil. Wouldn't you agree? Lakin Riley, you remember what happened to her, right? Uh, we all do. Have you ever heard of a, of a young person named Nex Benedict? I'm not familiar with this person. I want everybody to live a long and happy life. Next Benedict apparently had some gender uh, confusion. I'm not sure. She took her own life. And then the White House decided reluctantly to acknowledge Lake and Riley, and they made an official statement about Next Benedict. Uh, you can see the difference, can you? Here they are. One is, let's see, from the spokesman, we would like to extend our deepest condolences to the family and loved ones of Lake and Riley. People should be held accountable to the fullest extent of the law if they are found guilty. Given this active case, we'll have no further comment. 
Next, Benedict. Jill and I are heartbroken by the recent loss of Next Benedict. Every young person deserves to have the fundamental right and freedom to be who they are and feel safe and supported at that school and in their communities. Next, I mean, it just doesn't seem, this is something the president could have stopped. This is something that is so far outside of his job description. See what's happening here, right? You know, I do think that President Trump is the president for all Americans, liberals, uh, Democrats. Folks, forget the mainstream media, all right? Tell your friends, don't listen to a word they say. As we know, more than ever after this weekend, they are always lying. That's President Trump on July 4th of 2020. It is the best speech, in my opinion, of his entire presidency. And so far, I've challenged about a dozen of my left-leaning friends to watch this speech. And afterwards, they have to say, hmm, huh, maybe we are being lied to about this guy. I'm telling you, it is the best speech. You can find it on YouTube. Do not waste your time anymore with the mainstream media. And if you don't want to watch that, watch the rallies. Watch them in full. Don't let anybody summarize them for you. And you will know more than the fake news. And in 100 years of watching the fake news, you'll learn more in one of those rallies. Remember this guy? You know, after a lot of prayer and reflection, I've come to the conclusion that I'm, uh, I, I won't be endorsing Donald Trump this year. What a piece of work this guy, Mike Pence, vice president, makes him vice president of the United States. Hey, you don't want to endorse him? Then don't endorse him. You got to make a federal case of it and go on this show and that show and talk about it. Why? I'm not a... Just go away. The Ameri People don't like this guy. Zero percent, two percent, whatever he got. He couldn't make the, other, the last debate. Now, you know what his theme is, right? His theme is January 6th. On January 6th, I... Of course, I follow the Constitution. And lots of people have different opinions of what the Constitution means. That's what we have a Supreme Court for. You can believe what you believe about the Constitution. I can believe, and we have a court to figure it out. But it is his calling card, and he just can't put that one away. They're certainly entitled to due process of law for uh, any nonviolent activities that day. But uh, the assaults on police officers, ultimately an environment that, that claimed lives, uh, is something that uh, uh, I think was tragic uh, that day, and I'll, I'll never diminish it. Yes, you will. You'll diminish it when it's convenient and beneficial to you, and you'll maximize it when it's convenient and beneficial to you, Mike Pence. Interesting, he said some of those are due, um, some of those should be afforded due process. Everybody is afforded due process. Everybody. Now, here's where he maximizes January 6th. Uh, my life was in danger, right? It, does his life really seem to be in danger when he left his office and went to another part? I mean, he looks like he's trying to catch a train. It's just no big deal. Forget it. I'm sorry. You can't fear monger your way into the White House. And here's an example of him, well, in the garage. Does he look like his life is in danger? This was dramatized beyond all recognition for his political career, maybe to sell a few books. And back to the diminishing. He writes a book. He goes out and he sells that book everywhere, sell, signing copies, speaking about it, going on television. In that book, folks, guess what's not in it? The main chapter is about January 6th. He does not write the name Ashley Babbitt. Isn't that something? How do you write about January 6th? and not include her. What is he, Liz Cheney? It's crazy. Heartbreaking, actually. All right, what else, Mike? The reason that I, I cannot in good conscience endorse uh, Donald Trump this year also has to do with the fact that he is walking away, not just from keeping faith with the Constitution on that day, but also, Margaret, with a, a commitment to fiscal responsibility, a, a commitment yeah. to the sanctity of life, a, a commitment to American leadership in the world. I mean, the president's reversal just in the last week on, uh, on TikTok, mm -hmm. following an administration where, where we literally changed the national consensus on China, is the reason why, I, after a lot of reflection, I just concluded I, I cannot endorse the agenda that Donald Trump is carrying uh, into this national debate. 
So de facto, he is endorsing Joe Biden. He is. This in a small way, I mean, it doesn't really matter anymore, but it's not helpful, right? He's endorsing Joe Biden essentially here over TikTok. Joe Biden's America is this. At this time, now, Mike Pence, what does he stand for? What does he stand for? This is a commercial for Mike Pence. He wants to get on some corporate board. Something weird is going on. Something, it's all, something dark, something horrible. In good conscience? Is that what he said? Yeah, it is.